Hi everyone. I just wanted to show you where we're at on our fodder project. As you can see, we're just doing this on our kitchen table. We had this outside, but the flies were getting in it. So chickens love fodder, but so do flies. So you can try doing it outside, but we had a little bit better luck doing it inside. You can also put this in tubs, drill holes in the bottom, and add lids, kind of like a greenhouse. Um, if you add the lid, you really need the holes because it's going to be too much water otherwise. Since we just have these open, we've had pretty good luck not drilling holes in them. This grain is on day one. And when I say day one, what I'm meaning by that is we have soaked this seed for 12 hours or overnight. Somewhere between 6 and 12 hours. And then we've drained it and then this is day one. So day one starts after the soaking processes and you, and you can see that there's really no growth here. Some of the seeds have started to try to split open but there's not any really growth, no roots, anything like that. This seed is on day two and you can see it's really starting to get some growth there. We have mostly roots right now and as you run your hand over it it's kind of harder to manipulate because it's starting to stick together. This is another batch of day two. And the reason I have two batches of day two is because I filled it up too high and I had to split one of my tubs. So whenever you're filling this up, you really only want about a quarter inch of grain in there. If you get any more than that, like I probably put a half inch to an inch, then you're going to have too much grain because once the water, once it soaks in all that water, it's going to swell. And once it starts to get roots, it's really going to be much larger. I want to point out what's in here. This is barley. Barley has some protein in it and it's going to make a nice green grass for them to eat. But the majority of the protein is in the peas. But the peas are a little bit more expensive. So what we do is we mix the barley and peas together and it kind of averages out to the right protein ratio. And then we have sunflower seeds in here too. And that's for fat. Some people will also put mealworms in this and that's another good source of protein. We don't do that because our chickens are free range, but it, you know, it's not a bad thing to do. They have bugs that they eat all day crickets, grasshoppers, everything out there. This is on day three, and as you can see, it's got quite a bit of growth on it. You could feed this at any time. You can feed on day three, but you could also feed it when it's just sprouting. It just depends on how much growth you want. It seems like the more growth that you feed them, the less feed they're going to eat. So with us, we feed a 20% layer pellet along with this fodder. Some people just do fodder though. Some people, that's all they feed their chickens. We, we use it as a supplement though. This is on day four. And as you can see, it's, it's really got a lot of growth by now on day four. This particular tub and the last tub I showed you just had barley in it. That's what I started with. And then I decided to add the peas and the sunflower seeds to the other tubs. You can see this is pretty much done. I'm going to go ahead and give this one more day. I'm going to feed it on day five because I've already given them some stuff today. And it's pretty sturdy in there. I mean, it's made a good mat on the bottom for sure. And the chickens love this and it's it's so good for them. You can also order this on Amazon if your feed store doesn't carry it and you can get it in organic. This is not in organic because our feed store didn't have it in organic and that's where I got it. Instead of barley, a lot of people also use wheat, but we were having a problem with bugs in the wheat where we could get it locally 
the wheat was a little bit too old. So we did the barley and it's worked really great for us. We're also working on fermenting some feed. That's what's sitting over here. And to ferment feed, you just add some grains to a jar. And our jars are actually too full. But, you know, you live and learn. You probably want to fill the jar up maybe halfway and then put a couple inches of water. And the seed will swell. And then what you're going to do is you're going to leave that somewhere in a room temperature room and shake it a couple times a day. <laughs> and it takes three or four days and then you should start seeing some little bubbles forming. Once you start seeing those little bubbles forming, forming you want to open the lid and smell it. If it smells kind of sweet, uh, almost like a bread smell, then it's okay to feed them. If it smells rancid, then you've done something wrong or something has happened. You don't want to feed that to them. And what I do is if it smells appropriate, I'll drain off that water, which has the good bacteria in it, and I'll save it in another jar so that whenever I go to ferment the next feed, it already has a start of that good bacteria. And that's pretty much it. You can do this on your kitchen table. You can do this on your porch, but again, you may have a fly issue. You can do it in a back room where there's no lights. It's just, you can pretty much do this anywhere and you can scale it to the size that you want. <laughs> and the chickens love this and that's what they're eating actually out there right now. I had one tub that was on day five and I fed that to them this morning. So thanks a lot everybody for watching. Bye bye.